What is up everybody? It is Jack with Team Aquascape. We are out here in Winfield, Illinois, and we are gonna be doing a pond renovation. We're gonna be adding a new skimmer and a new biofalls and upgrading this stream and waterfall. Let me spin you guys around and show you guys. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Right here we have this gorgeous small little pond inside this kind of small backyard in Winfield and it makes a huge impact. I mean it's super loud. You have all the, you have these waterfalls bouncing back onto the house. So we're going to come in here. We're going to end up draining this pond all the way down to the bottom. Moving all these gorgeous fish into our blue tub that are sitting back behind me. And we're going to power wash it, rinse it, do a complete clean out on it. We're going to be coming over here and we're going to be replacing this skimmer. So this skimmer right here is a little outdated. It's a little dilapidated as you can tell and it's just not working. So we're going to come in here, replace the skimmer with our new 1000 series skimmer and then we have our waterfall setting up over here so we're going to come in here end up pulling all these plants out adding retaining wall we have about five tons of 18 to 24s that we're going to end up putting all back around here and then we're going to tear out that waterfall and add a 2500 biofalls and a small little meandering stream with a 10 by 15 piece of liner so i'm really looking forward to what this is look like because i actually did this clean out a couple times in the past so it's going to be cool to kind of give this kind of makeover and i'm pretty sure moose is here with the rock so let me walk you guys to the front let me just show you guys some access so some of the challenges that we come across when we're doing these pond rehabs and anytime that we're building in backyards is access you can see right now jack's coming over here pulling these plants back we're going to end up pulling some of these plants out that way we have a nice path for our ball carts and our wheelbarrows so we're coming over here and thank god the homeowner is gracious enough to use their uh, side yard so we brought mats out we matted everything because they have a nice paver walkway coming along here we're going to come all the way through here and then into the front yard so as you can tell illinois brick has arrived we're going to end up staging all of our materials right here so that way we have a nice easy access and a nice easy way into the yard uh, it'll be a straight shot for our five yards of soil and then our roughly seven tons of rock that we're going to be getting delivered our biggest thing is is trying to be efficient as possible so we have our ball carts and wheelbarrows already staged out here so that way we can start sloughing stuff into the backyard as soon as everything is on the street As you can see, the guys made quick work and we are cruising right along. We are not playing around today. Moose is still here dumping rock and we have the pond drain. Luis is gonna start power washing. Jack and the guys are starting to tear apart that skimmer because we're gonna be putting in a new skimmer. And before we pull out that skimmer, the biggest thing we wanna do is set water line because we don't wanna set the skimmer too low or too high in comparison to where these edges are at in the pond. We don't wanna disturb anything, create a leak possibly. We don't wanna have that thing sticking way too far out of the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and let me just take you guys down here real quick. I am going to set my water line right to where this screw is at. That second to top screw on the skimmer, we're going to set water line to that water line with that transit sitting over there in that corner. Sorry about my finger. I forgot that this camera likes to zoom in on my finger. So I, we're going to see how long it takes for me to not uh, use my finger to point. So we're going to use that transit to mark our water line and that way it's going to give us a nice benchmark for our new skimmer that's going to be putting in that place. Sometimes with these rehabs, you never know what you're going to come across, but you can tell that it's concrete. So we have Jack going back to the shop right now to grab a sledgehammer and the concrete saw because we need to cut probably a good foot on each side just to accept our skimmer. That way it gives us a little bit more wiggle room installing that new skimmer. So we're going to come in here. They're trying to just dig out as much as we can. And then thank God we're only 20 minutes away from the shop. It's still unfortunate that we have to send somebody back and kind of puts us behind, but fortunately we're close and we can keep busy with other things. As I mentioned earlier, it is very important for staging and being efficient as possible. So right here we have all our rock and it's important that all our rock, before we finish excavating the pond and and with this is a little bit different, like I said earlier, because the pond's already existing, rehabbing the waterfall. So it's important that the rock gets here first thing in the morning. So that way we're not waiting on anything and it's not holding us up. So we have all our 18 to 24s over here, all our 48 cobbles, and then our little bit bigger cobbles are sitting over here. And then, so we have one ton of this three quarter inch pea gravel that we like to use, this red flint. Pea gravel, as you guys always see in all our videos. And then we have six yards of topsoil, which I don't know if we're gonna quite use all six yards, but it's nice to have a little bit of extra. So it's nice to have all our 
our stuff already here and it's staged out on the street so that way we can take it through that gate over there with all our wheelbarrows and ball carts because back there the access is not very good it's just one way in one way out and the yard is not very big so we can't stage all our rock like we normally do so as we build that retaining wall we're going to be plucking through this pile and making sure that we don't overload that back area and cut off access to other parts of the yard that we need to access you guys earlier saw that we were ripping out some concrete and I just wanted to go a little bit more in depth on how we tackle on these situations so unfortunately homeowners really didn't know because they moved into this house a couple years ago they didn't know what was underneath this liner because they didn't build it so they had no idea what they were getting themselves into they just inherited it so unfortunately we came in here and you notice that there is a concrete shelf right in front of me we're assuming that there was a concrete pond here existing and they just came in and cited a leak and so they just decided to throw a liner over over it and without busting any of the concrete up. So we had to come in here and we had to run back to the shop, grab the concrete saw so we could form our skimmer into here. And that's when we discovered that the entire pond was lined with concrete previously before they decided to put liner in. So we made a quick work of that with when we got the sledgehammer and the concrete saw out here. So we're gonna put our skimmer in, get all that done. We're gonna run a new piece of plumbing all the way along into our back area. And then we had to tear out all of this. As you guys saw before, there used to be a waterfall there and that was all one piece. So we had to come in here and that was a good 16 to 20 inches thick of concrete all in there. So we came in there, took all that out. So now we have a clean canvas to what we're gonna work with. We're actually gonna be setting our biofalls right in the back, kind of right over there at the end of my finger. That's where our 2,500 biofalls is gonna sit. We're gonna get a quick little two drops out of this stream. It's a nice meandering stream. And then we're gonna throw our frame rocks down here somewhere, dumping into the pond. So the guys are back here, just kind of cranking away at this retaining wall. We have to get this retaining wall in in order to set our biofalls. So that way we have enough dirt in here and we don't cut off access. So we're gonna bring in all six yards of dirt all in here. The guys are bringing in all the stones right now and uh, we are making quick progress. The reason why these rehab projects cost so much is because we don't know what we're gonna get ourselves into. Exhibit, there's concrete underneath this entire pond. So and we did not know that until we ripped it apart and the fun in doing rehabs and that's what we learned from them. So we're gonna keep hauling rock back here. I'm gonna get that skimmer installed and we are gonna be able to finish cleaning this pond out. But it turned into a slurry considering we had the hose going because we did not want to dust up the entire yard considering that the house is so close we did not want anything getting up into the house and causing a mess. The man, the myth, the legend has showed up. Brian is on site. A little progress update, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? You know what, I just got done doing a live video and the couple things I'll tell you, for you contractors out there that are looking to do rehab projects, things you have to be so cautious about are all the unknowns. Like in Jack, you saw this, and I'm sure you already showed him, but cutting out that concrete for the skimmer to sit in there. We had no idea, or I had no idea when I came out here and sold this, that there was a concrete shell underneath here. And guaranteed what happened is 30 years ago, somebody came in here, built a pond, built it out of concrete, the concrete collapsed or cracked, it started leaking. Another contractor probably came in, I don't know, the pond doesn't look that old, so maybe six, seven years ago, and said the easiest remedy is to put a liner over the top of the thing, which I would agree with. So they did that right, but when we came in to put our skimmer box in, the skimmer box isn't gonna fit in the old concrete footing that was sitting there. So you guys had to come and saw cut all that out. Come over here, look at this. This whole tree root that's growing in here, they were complaining about the pond leaking. There's a high probability that the pond's not leaking, that this tree root that is hopped over the liner is actually sucking that much water out of this thing. They said they were losing about an inch every two days, which isn't a lot of water in a pond this size. So there's a high probability that's sucking water out. There could be a spot, like what happens with these tree roots, they start with a little root like this, these little tiny guys, then it moves into a root like this, then it moves into a bigger root. And as these bigger roots get bigger and bigger and bigger, the roots this size and the root becomes this size and that liner dips down underneath that root and water can be 
going out someplace in there. And you can tell this entire edge is solid roots. And I think it's all from this spruce here because they look like spruce tree roots to me. So you've got that. Underneath this is all concrete. So as we're going in here and trying to recreate a waterfall, I don't have the flexibility of folding the liner back and digging out to get my boulders to sit right. I have to be extremely cautious with bringing boulders over the top of this so I don't put a hole in the liner. And I have to build it according to the shape of the old concrete shell. You're having challenges with their existing pump because their existing pump is not an aquascape pump and it doesn't want to fit into our skimmer box the same way. So all these little things add to time. Even the iris, we've come and split the iris out. You can see where I've hacked at this thing. This iris was all the way out to here. And as I'm splitting, dividing the iris, it's exposing. It opens up a whole can of worms and I had to restack all the boulders back up and through here. These are all little things that we actually budget for because of so many times doing this kind of stuff. And you always budget for the unknown, but more often than not, customers are confused and why does a rehab type project cost so much more? And more times than not, the rehab project is going to be more money Money than a new project starting from start to finish because of all the unknowns. The best analogy I can give you, it's a little bit like putting an addition on a house. If you can build your dream house with one set vision and make sure every room is in there the way you want it, it'll be great. If you want to add an addition later, that addition is not going to be nearly as cost effective when you were building your house to begin with. guys it has been a little bit of a busy day we are just wrapping up our waterfalls up top we got a little bit of detail work to do down there and then we are done with this waterfall so it's going to be a quick tall drop coming out of the bio falls and then dumping that pooling area and then dog lagging back to the right and then kind of shooting across these rocks in here to get to come across the pond so looking forward to seeing how that's turned out it's kind of hard for you guys to see right now but once we get this turned on you guys will be able to tell what i'm talking about right now we're just doing some detail work up in the retaining wall and the homeowner wanted us to move that so of course we are going to go ahead and move that retaining wall forward and that way they have a little bit more planning room and stuff like that we have the time to do so and i know chris's crew might be coming and help us so hopefully fingers crossed they show up within the next hour or so and we can be able to crank all the detail work stuff out because that's stuff that always takes the longest we still got to clean up and everything like that but i just figured i'd give you guys a quick rundown of what we were doing we have the pond topped off to where we want it right now we still got to add the fish and everything like that but our main focus right now is to do all the detail work up in the waterfalls and let the foam dry and then we will throw the fish into the pond As you guys can see, water is flowing, fish are back in. I know I haven't seen you guys a whole lot this project. I've been shuffling, rocking everything back and forth. Saw we had a couple hiccups with this one, going with the concrete and uh, using old components and replumbing. So it definitely had our work cut out for us, but I'm ecstatic with how it turned out. And I know the homeowners have said the same. So let me do a quick walkthrough before I'm out of here and hope you guys enjoy. So as you guys can see, the pond is totally transformed. As we came in here this morning, it was just a single drop coming out of the pre-existing biofalls into this natural pond which we didn't touch anything really trimmed out some of the marginals along the edges around here just so the homeowners could get a better view from their kitchen window and we did run into a couple issues throughout this project pond had concrete underneath it so we had to come in here with the saw and cut out enough room for our skimmer to fit along the back side of our biofalls so let me show you guys what i mean by that as you can see here our skimmer pre-existing skimmer i was a little bit shorter or thinner than this one which came to about here so we had to get the concrete saw and rip out the right side of it and also out in front so it didn't block or weird door. It came up about halfway just because the old skimmer was a little smaller. So we had to excavate all that out, sledgehammer it out just so it could fit nicely. We also, instead of using their existing plumbing, ran a whole new pipe all the way back around here to our new biofalls. Previous biofalls sat right at this brick wall here and just dumped directly in. What we did is we threw in a bib liner and brought it back a little bit, creating this extra berm. So the homeowners have a nice little garden area and sitting area back here rather than just a straight wall as it was 
as before, dumping right into the pond. This gives it a little more pleasing to tuck away some plants and to actually be able to enjoy the area rather than just a straight drop. So really glad with how it really transformed not only the pond, but also the whole backyard where they're able to enjoy it from this beautiful seating area out there along with their kitchen window right there. And I know that they're eating dinner because it's a little late. So super happy with how this turned out. And once again, we'll see you guys on the next one.